Hi, this is Kyle with Nimble Naga Nio, and we're finally here on the last stop of the Swift Components Tour. And I'm regretting to let you know this, but we are actually in a different universe. That's right. We went from the universe on a Mac, and now we are stuck in a Generation 1 iPad Mini. Things are looking slightly fuzzy, not quite the beautiful resolution we know and love, but it's time to talk Swift. So here we are on the last stop titled Accelerometer. The accelerometer is actually just a small part of the core motion framework, but I wanted to include the accelerometer here because it's sort of like a landmark thing for iOS. A lot of the first iOS games that used the accelerometer, I mean, it seemed like a big thing when I had an iPod Touch way back when. And it's maybe not as popular now, but it's always worth learning about. So let's talk about what's going on on this screen. We have X, Y, and Z labels, each with a value label underneath. And then a little bit of some something something going on at the bottom, but that's a surprise. So my iPad is sitting on my desk right now. I'm going to pick it up and we're going to see these value labels go wild. And that's because this is the accelerometer reporting the X, Y, and Z rotation values with the gyroscope in real time and I'm just displaying those values on these value labels so that you can see sort of what's happening. Something I learned doing this that we can talk about in a little bit is that using the accelerometer by itself resulted in values that were a lot shakier and a lot more wild than this and you can actually use the accelerometer and gyroscope together to report a lot more smooth values. I'm going to sort of rotate my device in front of me and you can see the Y value is slowly getting smaller and smaller into the negative numbers and then back to zero as I flip it upside down while the X and Z labels stayed fairly close to negative one and one. It's just something cool and there's not normally many implementations of the accelerometer in apps that aren't games but there surely are some good ideas out there. I don't have any right now, um, except this one that we're gonna talk about in a second. But above that is the zero button, um, which you can't see where my thumb is hovering over, but it's hovering right over the zero button. But that's sort of like a calibration button. So I'm gonna tip my iPad so none of the numbers are close to zero, or at least as far from zero as I can get them. The X values being a little tough to work with. They're all sort of around negative 0.5 or 0.5 and then I'll press the zero button and they're all zeroed out to zero and it's sort of like we've reached a new, let's call it home base. And then as we rotate the iPad from that point, I'm gonna rotate it forward. Then we can see that the Z value got a lot bigger. I'll press the zero button again and then rotate it backwards and now the zero the z value is getting a lot smaller and i know it's tough to see in real time but i'm having to use my ipad since the ios simulator on a mac does not have the accelerometer but i think this is working out great it's fun so i'm going to zero it out again hold my ipad as steady as possible and then flip the enable functionality switch are you ready three two one <gasps> screen change color and I'm just flopping my iPad around. We're getting different colors. Basically what I did was I hooked the X, Y, and Z values up to the R, G, and B values of a UI color. And I am on each update of the accelerometer, I am basically, I'm basically setting the background color to match that. Pretty cool, huh? Mm-hmm. So I think this is all we'll need from my iPad. So let's hop into the code in this alternate universe called a Mac. And we're back in a much more familiar world, Xcode. And for now, we're going to skip the storyboard part of the tour because there's nothing interesting going on. It's exactly as we saw it without the functionality switch on in the app. The three XYZ labels, the three XYZ value labels, the zero button or the calibration button, and then the functionality switch and label. And here we have references to the 
X, Y, and Z value labels and the functionality switch and some other properties here. One called Motion Manager, which is an instance of the CM Motion Manager class. And sadly, this isn't really going to be a walkthrough of how to use the Core Motion framework or how to implement any of the fun stuff like the gyroscope or the accelerometer. This is just going to be a very general example of how I'm using it in this dinky little app. And then we also have a property for an NS number formatter and then an object for CM acceleration called calibrated acceleration. And we'll get to what the purpose of that is in a second. So in view did load, we just have a little bit of setup for the number formatter. And then we're asking the motion manager if device motion available. And that's why we had to use a physical iPad because it has the hardware that Core Motion uses for its functionality and what it, it was made for. And sadly, the simulator does not even have any simulation of that. So if you run this view controller in the simulator, nothing's going to happen. You can flip the functionality switch. I think the screen might turn blue, but that's not very fun. There's no functionality in there. It's just a blue screen. But if it is, we're going to set up the device motion monitoring and before we get to that method down here and view will disappear we're going to turn off the device motion updates so that once we leave this view controller the this motion manager instance is not going to keep tracking the accelerometer even when you're not on this screen so we just want to make sure that we're only monitoring this device motion stuff on the screen and one thing to point out that the device motion title is actually a title for using the gyroscope and the accelerometer together to get those more stable and smooth X, Y, and Z value changes that we were talking about when I had the app open. And you can also just use the gyroscope and the or the accelerometer by themselves for different purposes. But for this, using both at the same time provided with some better readings. To set up device motion monitoring, we're again checking if the device motion is available. And if so, we are going to set the device motion update interval to 0.01 seconds. And that means that every 100th of a second, so 100 times a second, it's going to report the current readings from the hardware to the motion manager here. So up to 100 times a second, you'll see the values changing as you rotate your device around if you're running this app on your device. And here with the motion manager, instead of using delegates or target action methods, we're actually getting the reports from the motion manager about changes in the motion values to this block here, which we are running on the main queue. And what we get from this is a data object, which is a CM device motion instance, and then an error object. And just for this example, I'm not worrying about the error. During the development of this, I never ran into any errors, not saying that you shouldn't at least check for them in your app. NS errors are a whole other dis discussion. And then what we're taking here is we're going to set each of the X, Y, and Z value labels to the data.gravity.value to the CM device motions property gravity values for X, Y, and Z. The gravity property is just an instance of CM acceleration where it is recording the values for the gyroscope and the accelerometer combined. And getting a little bit ahead of ourselves for this calibration stuff is we will take the calibrated CM acceleration values from our local instance of that so that if we have calibrated the accelerometer, we can do the math to find the adjusted values here. And below that, I'm just checking if the functionality switch is on. And if it is, then we'll call this method set background with calibration. And the only thing that's going on there, we are animating over the duration of the motion update interval, which we set up here, to set the background color to the absolute value of the motion manager's device motion gravity values and casting them to a CG float so that we can use them in this init method of UI color. As a positive number, if you increase the X value of the device motion, or decrease it as long as it's under zero, then we will slowly add more red into this RGB color and so on with green and blue. And back to the calibration, when we tap the zero button, we are going to store 
the current device motion values from the device's hardware into this local property that I've called calibrated acceleration so that when we are up here and setting the value labels to the correct values we can take into account where we wanted to zero out the x y and z values and take into account the current value with the calibrated value to get our value for display so i hope all that made sense it's one of the more complicated things we've worked through on this tour and even though the tour is technically over we've reached the last stop stay tuned for some more in the future we'll be going over stuff like interface builder how to use it and how to use it with a view controller, maybe getting into navigation a little bit or about dates that we've been running into a lot through this tour. And maybe we'll even run into a few new stops along the way. So see you next time and thanks for watching.